Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are having the various parameters associated with the microwave signal propagation in the microwave system bench to be measured in this particular chapter. Hence the name microwave measurements. The various measurements as like the VSWR, the power, the frequency value. We have been measuring the techniques we have seen so far. The helpful devices in all these measurements were the slotted line along with the tunable detector, the various meters as like the power meter, the frequency meter or wave meter in general we can say here, the spectrum analyzer and the network analyzer also we have been introduced to. After learning the attenuation measurement, let us have the measurement of the another factor that is very important to us that is called as phase shift. So here we start with our topic called as phase shift measurement. As far as the propagation of microwave signal which is basically the electromagnetic wave having the fixed frequency range in between 1 gigahertz to the 300 gigahertz we have all the propagation information accounted into the gamma called as propagation constant. Propagation constant is basically the summation of the real part of alpha and the imaginary part of the beta hence we write alpha plus j times beta where we have alpha to be the attenuation constant and beta to be the phase shift constant and this is the summation of alpha plus j beta is equal to propagation constant. In the previous video we have covered the attenuation measurement for the microwave signal whereas the phase shift measurement is to be addressed here. So phase shift information is accounted into the beta. So beta is basically given in a simple formulation of 2 pi divided by lambda suffix g. When we talk about the phase here, so for the one wave cycle, we can go for 0 degrees to 360 degrees of phase. Whereas we have the transformation from 0 radians to that of 2 pi radians for the same wave cycle. So here in this transformation for the wave cycle, the distance covered that is the wavelength. So for the microwave signal inside the waveguide, we have the representation by guide wavelength lambda suffix g. So if we are successful to measure how many times of wavelengths inside the waveguide have been covered, so that time we can be able to get the information for the phase shift constant and in term the phase shift measurement will be successful because the relationship with the lambda g and that of the beta is with the help of the constant 2 pi here. So being it the constant value knowing the lambda g we can know the beta to take phase shift measurement here. So the block schematic diagram to explain the phase shift measurement technique can be shown like this. So here this is the block schematic diagram where we have first of all the microwave source. The microwave source will generate the microwave signal which is fed as input to port number 3 of H plane T here. In the previous chapter microwave components we were introduced to the H plane T. So H plane T is having the additive property when we have the equal magnitude and the equal phase inputs to the collinear arms. Whereas on to the reversal, when we have the input to the H arm, it splits it into the two equal magnitudes and the same phase components here. So here it is the port 3 of H plane T. So the two equal magnitude same phase signals of the microwave will be going to the upper and lower branches of this block diagram. Now here we have the blocks named pad here. So these are basically the microwave isolators that we have already introduced to which will not allow any of the reflection back to the source side to be completely absorbed here. Whereas the propagation of microwave signal 
from the source side to the load side will be completely allowed here. Now for the upper branch here we shall be making the use of connection with the network actually whose phase shift is to be measured. Whereas for comparison purpose we take here the use of calibrated precision type of the phase shifter in the second branch at the same position here. So after it passes the network or the device under test for which the phase shift measurement is to be carried here, we give the output signal input to one of the collinear arm of the H plane T. The next collinear arm is fed as input as it passes through the precision type of calibrated phase shifter here. Now the two will be added up and the summation of the two is further fed as input to the slotted line which is terminated at the another end and onto the slotted line as we have a mount of the crystal detector it can have the display to the CRO here. So the CRO will be having a display of the two signals. So as we feed this input to this particular network here this will introduce a phase shift into it. If we don't have anything to be adjusted with the help of the phase shifter, it will be into the original form. Hence, the two signals with a phase difference we can visualize onto the CRO. Now, on the CRO, this kind of visualization we can be obtaining here. So, let us see this is the first signal shown with the solid line. This is the signal due to the first path shown in the block schematic diagram here whereas due to the second path that is having the calibrated phase shifter of the precision type here this is the another signal that has been having a phase shift of phi angle here. Now the calibrated phase shifter of precision type is having such a type of the dial with the help of the knob the amount of phase shift can be measured here. Now we have to adjust that calibrated phase shifter so that the two waves that have been displayed onto the CRO will be overlapping each other. So when the signal due to first path and signal due to second path will be the unique one combined at the same location making the phase shift phi will be equal to zero. So that time whatever the reading of the calibrated precision type phase shifter will be there that reading we can note and this way we can have the measurement of the phase shift here. So by the next lecture we shall continue in the same chapter to address the next topic that is impedance measurement. So for more such details over the subject microwave engineering you can subscribe to ECDA channel to enhance your knowledge. Thank you.